league this offseason. Russell Westbrook, by far. Why would I say that? The reality is Tim Fertitta and Daryl Morey go all in every single season. They have expectations of a championship. Now, we can all look and see how stacked the West is. Lakers, Clippers, what Utah has done. And obviously, this Westbrook Harden thing has to work out. I believe that it will. But when the expectations are a championship, when just last year you're willing to blow things up and, and storm into the locker room and question D'Antoni and question Harden and question Chris Paul. And keep in mind, while the Warriors were rolling, this was the only team in the NBA, the only front office to say, hey, we're going after the Warriors. We're going to challenge them. And these expectations haven't lessened. They understand it. I'm behind it. Because when you have a star like James Harden, you commit to him. You don't blow it up. You try to win now. But as far as expectations, there's a lot more from internally on that Westbrook well, expectations move. is not the only variable in the idea of assessing how risky something is. Mm. It's like, what is the alternative? And I think the alternative for them was not nearly as good. I don't know that, that bringing back Chris Paul would have worked out since they were kind of having a fall apart. So I don't necessarily see this as super risky. I feel like that's They could have blew more, things up. They, they could have went younger. I feel like this was more of a, a kind of a panic move, but it's not necessarily a risky move. They had to do something. I would say where the risk lies to me is what happened with Kimba Walker going from Charlotte up to Boston. Mm. Now, I think that it's risky for Boston some because their issue before, if you uh, assume that Doris Burke's piece about the locker room and Kyrie Irving, that he wasn't as big a problem in the locker room as people suggest, which her piece kind of goes a little ways to say he was some of the problem, but not all of the problem. If you believe that, all you're doing is essentially replacing Kyrie Irving with a lesser Kyrie Irving. And part of the problem with their development there is that the young players who need to develop, the young wings, Brown and Tatum and those guys, had their development thwarted by the fact that Kyrie Irving was a high-possession, high-usage point guard. So they got rid of one and went and got a less talented, high-usage point guard. I understand, and um, Rosillo made this argument to me in the hallway when we were talking about this, that Kemba's a really good catch-and-shoot player, so he can play off the ball. But I'm not sure that that's the best usage I'll, for Kemba Walker I'll, in that I'll situation. I'll say this real quick. Uh, Personality-wise, Kemba's probably one of the most humble guys that I know. And I right. played with Kyrie, and the reality is – Kyrie had NBA championship type of expectations. I'm numero in uno, and you're not going to have those same things from Kimba, I don't believe, personality-wise. on the court, do you disagree with the on-the-court analysis that, that part of the problem is you wanted the ball in the hands of your development, specifically Tatum. You wanted Tatum it will be. with the ball it will in his be. hands Let more. Let me take your arguments one at a time. One. It's not a risky move with Westbrook because the alternative was CP3. That's a, that's a steeper declining, same basic contract, but several years older, what, four years older and in steeper decline. So you swap that contract out for a better one, well, for a better asset. Better, though, because it's slightly longer. You, yes, you know they, for they asset, gave up they gave one right. year older. Yeah, I, Matt, four you're years aware older. when you give up first-round picks, you don't think about tomorrow. You're focused on you're, now. You're expecting, so if the expectations you're expecting, are a championship, no, you don't get first a championship. First-round picks for the Rockets are like second-round picks for most teams. These are, lo- these are expected a to be low-round a pick Low is a round. pick. So that, that's clearly not true. But the point <laughs> so is, you're going to have nothing coming in? You're going to have no picks? Uh, They're literally getting they, rid of everything. They, they just took the value that they had from late or late first round pick, whatever it is, plus CP3, a contract that would be incredibly hard to move. They now have also a bad contract, but a better asset, easier yeah. to move, more right. trade value. I believe I they win risky. that deal. Yeah. Right, okay. So that's one. That's, I don't think that's – it may not work, but that's not, not risky, risky exactly because the other thing wasn't going to work anyway. Um, Kemba, whatever you want to say about Kyrie, and a lot has been made, no, it's Gordon Hayward, and Stephen A. Smith makes the point all the time. Gordon Hayward was given minutes that belonged to Tatum and Brown. Everyone's upset. People really like Kyrie. Bottom line is when Kyrie played, they got worse. Is that just a Styles thing? No, I don't think it is. That's my hunch is that it's not. Kemba is a toned down Kyrie slightly. Kyrie's a little better than Kemba, a little better at everything than Kemba, but Kemba's – Best pro- approximation you can get of him. He's the closest. And here's the difference now, guys. Does Gordon Hayward really need the ball to be a good player? The answer is no. He can get out in the open court if he's healthy. He can play some defense. He can do some things. Does Jalen Brown really need the ball? The answer is also no. He can play like Hayward if you want him to. The guy who needs the ball on that team is Tatum. And I believe that Kemba with Tatum, that's a little big. That is going to work. I think the team just got better. The riskiest move... Or player acquisition this offseason? 
KD to the Nets. Mm. That's the number one risk. They had to do it so, because they flipped the town. But Kevin Durant is going to try to come back from an injury that no one in the history of basketball has ever come back from 100%. He's going to do it in his 30s. He's going to do it in the biggest media market in the world. He's going to do it under tremendous expectations. Now, if that if he winds up being something like 70% of what he was and then he re-hurts himself and everything and the Nets are locked into a long-term max deal, what does that do to a steadily improving franchise that would otherwise flip this town permanently from a Knicks town to a Nets town? So I appreciate the performance and the delivery of all of that. It was, it was great it was, pause. It was. It was great, it was great step back delivery and then you fired with all those takes. But first of all, you said it like it was a surprise. Like everyone knows he's coming from his Achilles injury, and that's not going to be easy. But this goes back to the first point that I made from the beginning of this segment is that it has to do with expectations. And there have been very little expectations for the Nets until now. Now they have expectations, and this is a risk that you have to take. I think the reward of having KD and also for a place to be taken seriously, a place that will take care of guys, a place that will um, go after big-time free agents, this was an opportunity that they could not pass I agree, up. I agree it, they have to it do it, but it comes even with if, enormous but risk. My argument is even if KD doesn't work out, they have changed the perception of their team. Well, that's what Max and, said. But, they, they the but, they, but also, they'd already done that. The reason that Kyrie and KD could go there is because the Nets had already established that. So, so of course, if KD's available, especially with the Knicks as the number one team, and now you can flip that, of course you have to do it. But there is inherent risk in okay, the move. Okay, so let's – okay, take me to – Two years from now, KD doesn't return. He returns to 50% of himself, and it's a disappointment. You would rather have the core that they had before and not KD? Well, just keep that core. It's not just that core. It's that when you use all your cap space on that player, as opposed to waiting to the net, if if you just have to steadily improve as a club, you add the right pieces and then you wait for the right superstar. That could be a better alternative. Hey, Max, who else was Brooklyn going to sign? This year, who, who no, else were they going to sign? Nobody. This year, it could be Kyrie and someone else. Let me help you. Out I here. would do the same thing. They you did. I'm not finals. arguing that. Everybody watched the finals. It's a risk. What I would did also Kevin take. Durant look like for a, for five, what a quarter oh. of the NBA finals? Ice cold. What did he look like? Cash what? money. Had, what does what that have, have to do with double anything? digit points? That has nothing because to do with this. The whole point is. I'm giving you a vision of what this man looks like when he comes back. But no one's ever come back from this 100%. Ever. Even if I mean, he's 70%, make, he's pe- Kevin Durant. Yeah. And, and people, people 70% make the, of KD is Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, and, and we, and that's pretty good. That's hold pretty on. good. That's better than and anything talk, that you just gave up. And me and you talked about this. You you got a short-term memory. I don't know if those ears are in the way. Look, have you seen what Rudy Gay looks like? He's dunking on guys, getting to his shot. He's physical. He looks Rudy Gay great is not player. as good as he once was. Not that Rudy Gay was a great player. Is he player. explosive? He's not the same player. Is he explosive? Kind of. Is he still dunking over guys? Yes. I'm not well, claiming on, that Kevin on, Durant will never dunk again. Is he still dunking over guys? I'm not claiming he'll never dunk again. I, I, so, the, no, no, no. Is Dominique he Wilkins, over guys? That's the only guy that they Will, point to. Dominique Wilkins is the one top-level player who had this injury, came back as most of what he was. That's hey, one what year guy was that? 30 hey, years ago. Hey, what year but, was that? Max, that was 30 years but ago. But that's you don't one think, guy. Hasn't, Why hasn't, hasn't the point been made throughout, I mean, the past few weeks that even if he doesn't come back the same player, it's still worth Right. That's the point. That's, that's, my, that's my that's no. my argument is that is that he comes back seventy five percent. He's still better than most of the free agents that they could go after. So that's why I can't say that's much of a risk. They've oh already won God. because if they've he, changed the perception. If he comes and back, he comes and back. Does it, by the way, I don't want to like even speak it into the world. Knock wood, but no, if he comes back realistic. and re-injures himself, that's no good. If he comes back at seventy five percent of himself, that is an all star player that you're paying superstar money. No, to. no. See, that's the difference. The max contract limits that. You. Uh, Kyrie Irving, um, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, they're all being underpaid. Because, I agree with that. So if you bring them back and it's still under the max contract, it's still for way less than he deserves. You're Not still necessarily getting, for an all-star. Absolutely. No, because the absolutely. Mark, because just because you rather have teams nobody. Out, 
Just because teams hand out max <laughs> contracts to guys who nobody. don't deserve them. That's the market. Mean, it's not that they don't deserve that, them. That's but the if market. you are in that market and you make the wrong choice, you've hamstrung your team. That's you fine, have nobody but you can't make the wrong choice with Kevin Durant. No, you rather have nobody. I would pay, I'd rather have another superstar. You're, you're arguing that you wouldn't pay max money to 70% of KD. I absolutely would pay that any every day of the week. So that's why I'm saying it's not risky. If Kevin Durant comes back at 70%, he comes back 100%, then we don't have this conversation. He'll, but no one they ever have right. well, No one's ever done that. greatness moving around the NBA this offseason. We saw eight All-Stars, three former MVP switch teams. That's the most in a single offseason. All right, coming up at the debate desk, are we underestimating John Green?